Are you looking for an easier way to get more accurate color in your recorded videos? If so, stay tuned because we're going to be talking about an interesting product, which main purpose and goal is to help make sure your colors are more accurate in your recorded video. Roll that intro. What's going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about a product that we've been using here on How To Tech for a few months and we're still messing with it and still trying to learn the best practical uses of it, but it is a great product whenever it comes to getting more accurate color inside of recorded video. So if you're making YouTube videos or things like that, this thing right here may help you out. Now there are other variants out there and other products out there that are similar to this, but essentially what it is, it's a color checker card. And this is actually the data color spider checker 24. I had to look cause I wanted to make sure I gave the right name for it, but it is interesting. So a lot of people will use these for photography, but they can actually be used for cinematography. Um, and one of the good tools that we're going to be talking about today is called the MBR color corrector. And that's really what's going to help you utilize this product inside of a product called or inside of Adobe Premiere. And I believe this will also work with stuff like DaVinci Resolve. So it is a really neat product. It gives you accurate color cues and judging by the lighting in the climate that you're recording in, it essentially says, I know exactly what this color is supposed to be. We're going to change it to that in the color correction process. And it's going to do these for each single, you know, one of these colors that are on this card. And that is going to be super useful for getting more accurate colors. So now let's go ahead and talk about this just a little bit more. So first I want to go ahead and show you guys what it looks like for a typical how to tech video without any color correction. And that's what you should be seeing right now. And now I want to go ahead and show you what it looks like whenever we add color correction by using this spider checker 24. It should look quite a bit better and more accurate to the actual tones. And that's great. But this is more of a static recording environment. I have lights positioned in pretty much the same way whenever I record every single video. And that is convenient. But if you're recording outside or you're taking pictures outside, that's where this tool can become really useful because the whether the sky's overcast or whether you're not getting as much light or sun, and maybe the sun's casting more of an orange glow on something, it really affects the way that that image needs to be color corrected. And for somebody that's not, you know, a professional in color correction, this is going to help out a lot. So to simulate that, I'm going to go ahead and leave these other lights in here on more of a white light. And I'm going to change the main light that I use here to more of an orange glow. So I'm going to go ahead and get up and do that. And then we're going to come back and take a look at this. So now we've got more of a warm light and it's pretty obvious. My face looks really orange, especially since we haven't color corrected this part yet, but we can actually fix that with this card. So all you've really got to do is just hold this card up in frame, make sure that the light isn't being casted um, to where there is a glare on it. So make sure your card's held to where there's no glare on it. And then all we're going to do now is go inside of our editing program and show you guys how to go ahead and use the MBR color corrector, how to get it installed, and then how to drag it over to essentially set these colors up to what we actually want them to be. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. So first I'm going to go ahead and show you how to download and how to install the correct tool that you're going to need to be able to use your data color spider checker 24. And it's actually compatible as we can see on the screen with quite a few different other color charts. Now, the reason why I went with this spider checker is because it's actually fairly priced at $40, which sounds crazy for something like this. But if you really care about your color accuracy, it, it's something worth looking into. So, there's that. So yeah, these are the different uh, checkers that it supports. If you want to go with a different one, there's some other ones out there that are really cool as well, such as this Passport, um, which is like a really small color checker by X-Rite. And uh, it, I believe it has even more colors on it and things like that. So it's really neat. It's got a nice interface and it's actually fairly easy to use once you figure out how to use it. Now, what I'm going to be showing you today is going to be using the free version. Um, there are full versions of this. So if you have like a static set and you want to just create a LUT, if you don't know what that is, um, do uh, I'll just briefly explain it, I guess. A LUT is a lookup table and essentially it takes colors and it's like this is the value that's supposed to be coming out of the camera or 
the video file and uh, I'm no professional with that. But essentially it's like this is what my color should be and if you've got a static set you can get your lighting done right and essentially it should be the same every single time as long as you don't mess with your lighting. That's really useful but that requires the pro version or the full version and you can purchase that if you're interested in it but today we're gonna to be just talking about how to use the free version. To download, just go over to the downloads page and we'll download the trial versions only. And you'll actually have to go all the way down here to the bottom to get the latest version. And you'll just click on trial and pick where you wanna save it. So I'm gonna save mine to my downloads. I'm going to click on this button here and then click show in folder. And then just right click on it, windows, and then we're going to extract all. And then we'll click extract and it should clear out that folder. So the one thing that we need in here is actually this file right here, which is MBR underscore color corrector underscore three. Um, your installation may vary depending on what version of Premiere that you're using. And you can also use this in other applications as well, such as uh, Lightroom, I believe, and other things like that. So it, it is very useful. But what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to go to how to install MBR so I can show you and I'll go ahead and leave these links in the description down below for you. If I remember, I, I'll promise I'll try my best. Um, but the reason why is because these paths are really important because this is where you need to install it. So essentially for After Effects and Premiere Pro, they're going to be pretty much the same no matter what version. It's just the subfolder. Um, for the version is different. So what I would suggest is if you're not sure what version you're using, um, just copy all the way to the ends of the plugins folder, just copy, and then you can open up your file explorer. That's what I did at the bottom, but my camera's covering it. Um, and then, yeah, just click up here on the top address bar of this and you can do control V to paste it in there and press enter. And now we're here. So we'll go ahead and open up the 7.0 folder because that's what it tells us. And then media core. And I already have mine installed because you can see this right here, MVR underscore color corrector underscore color or whatever three. Um, just take your file from your downloads folder and here's a little tech tip for you. Control N and File Explorer will open up another instance and then we'll just go to our downloads and then you would find the color corrector and it would be as simple as copying this or dragging and dropping it from this folder over here and it's installed. It's that easy. It's not difficult, I promise. And there's also documentation if you're using a Mac as well. So after you've installed the MBR color corrector plugin, I do want to mention you need to have Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and Media Encoder closed. If you have any of those three installed while you're doing so, you may run into problems. It may not let you put it there. Um, but once you've went ahead and dropped it in the right folder, go ahead and open up something like Adobe Premiere. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna pretty much throw in some files. So I'm gonna find a project file for actually this video of where earlier in this video, I kind of showcase the color correction and how cool it is. And we've got it right here. So we've got a clip you can see where I've changed the color value of my lights. We're hoping to get rid of this orange glow. So we'll see if we're able to do so with this. So we're gonna drag this in now to our timeline. And what we're going to do is once we have this in our timeline, we're going to try to find a place where it's not blurry in frame. So definitely don't be flashing this around, try to get it lined up somewhat. What we're gonna look for, and I think I even mentioned it here, there's a lot of glare on the card and we don't want glare. So I'll even zoom this in so we can see the card a little better. And what we're looking for is where there's no glare on this card. So we've got a lot of glare there, I'm talking about it. And that looks good. There's no glare on the card right here. So we're gonna leave this right here. And what we're gonna do now is we are actually gonna go ahead and go to our effects tab. So you can go over here and what we're gonna be looking for is a video effect. So we'll go to video effect and it is under color correction, I believe and we're looking for MBR Color Corrector 3. It should just show up here if you put it in the right folder, um, something that we talked about just a few minutes ago. So we'll go ahead and drag and drop that on here. And what I am gonna do is I'm actually gonna zoom this back out. We'll go over to the effects panel on this left side and we're gonna look at this because there's quite a few things that are going on here. There's the correction and there's a bunch of other stuff, but there's one thing we need to do first. We need to tell it what kind of color correction card we're using. So we're actually using the data color spider checker 24. So we'll select that. And then what we need to do is click on source 
and source is actually going to let us grab this right here. And what we need to do is essentially just drag this to where it is on your card. It's that easy. If your card's flipped upside down, that's okay. Just drag these and reorient them to wherever they need to be. And this will be a good time to probably zoom back in now. And we can actually see that these colors do line up. So this color is more of a like cyan color and this color right here in the bottom's white and we can see that line kind of shows us where it's supposed to go so we'll just kind of drag it into the corner we'll do the same thing with the black these might not line up perfectly but that's okay try to keep though the card as square with the frame as possible but that might not be possible with your current lighting setup but that's okay so we're going to get these as good as we can and then we're going to go ahead and I believe click read from frame. And what that should do now is that should apply that correction that we were looking for. So we'll go back to fit and yeah, all we've got to do now and make sure you click read from frame on this top one here. So what we're going to do now is we can see that this is what these colors actually look like inside of the frame and this is what we want them to look like so they are very much different and to toggle back and forth and see what our color correction looks like we can essentially just toggle this fx button and we can see that it color corrected the whole scene from a harsh uh, not maybe not harsh but just an oversaturated orange glow and it made it look more realistic to what it looks like in here on a normal basis it's going to give those color values that this card expects. Now, I do wanna go ahead and mention, that doesn't mean that your video out of your camera is going to look like it looks in the building or in the place you're shooting because it was very harsh. It, there was a very harsh orange glow on me. So keep in mind that this could be used to get a more accurate color for something like this card, but that sometimes you may want to go for more of a stylized look and maybe you do want some of those more warm colors and things like that. So that's how this works. It's not hard to use. It's actually very easy. And for 40 bucks and a free program on the internet, you really can't beat it um, for trying to get pretty decent colors, even if you don't know that much what you're doing. Now, I can tell you another thing that really does matter is your camera settings. I am by no means an expert whenever it comes to the camera, at least that I have, and I'm still learning about it more and more every day. And part of the problem with this is this is not as vibrant as it probably should be. And that's because I don't set the exposure and everything in the camera the best way I probably should. And that's something I'm still learning on. So I'll probably make a video on that sometime in the future of some, um, you know, basic tips on how to get your camera to look the best it possibly can. Because like I said, I'm still learning. I'm no, by no means an expert whenever it comes to camera, but I do a lot of editing from time to time. And this right here has actually helped me get more accurate colors. Um, while the exposure and the total vibrance may not be as good as it should be, um, that's more of a problem with the way that I shoot, not a problem with this card. But yeah, as far as this goes, this card makes it a lot easier to get more accurate colors for your video. So yeah, guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead, destroy that like button, get subscribed, and turn on notifications if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel financially, go ahead and become a member today. Check it out. We've got two different tiers, and they come with some benefits, as such as being on the screen right now like all of our other lovely members. But you get early access to videos, polls, and a bunch of other things and features that we're going to be adding as well to our membership. So we thank you guys, everybody that's out there that's current member, and and we really appreciate it. If you guys want to also check out our community discord, it'll be linked down below. We currently have over 8,000 members over there and it's a great place to share your live streams, your videos, and a ton of other things. There are also free resources and like I said, just tons of other things you can do on the community discord. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Tech helping you take your tech to the next level and I will see you guys in the next video.